a very blue launch visualization button here. And if I click that, it will take all of that numeric data into the CDD Vault visualization tool. That loads in a separate tab here. Uh, so now that data is here. By default, uh, we will put uh, a four parameter scatter plot at the top. We've just chosen the first two columns that you sent over as the X and Y. There's a data table down below. And then there's a series of histogram filters over here on the right. So you can start configuring this. So if you did want a four parameter scatter plot, but you didn't want the X axis to be molecular weight, uh, you can set that and perhaps that's going to be your uh, mutant two inhibition scores. So now you have mutant two inhibition versus log P on the Y axis, I'll leave that. And you can also affect the size and color and shape of your dots by going into this settings mode. And you can see here the color can be set to a particular parameter as well. And you can change the colors around a setting we settings wheel here, um, what have you, to increase or decrease the number of colors that's used. Uh, but you can also bend those colors. So if you really just prefer kind of a, a you know, three bends, we by default use the stoplight, uh, green, yellow, red, uh, what have you. Uh, you can affect or change the bend sizes here. So perhaps you want to uh, change those. Uh, you can add new bins and set a color uh, for the new bins. So you can have as many bins and um, set the interval as you wish. You can also do the shape here. So if I set the shape uh, perhaps to a molecular weight as well, uh, same thing, you can set the bin uh, sizes here for the uh, shape and size. Uh, maybe that's going to be the PKA for the size. Um, again, you can set just the full range of sizes or bin the size as well uh, for a small, medium, and large. Um, so you can set those as well, changing the interval. There is an opacity setting. So if you have a, a bunch of uh, overlaying uh, dots, you can set the opacity here so you can kind of see through those a little bit better and make them a bit more visible. So if I click OK now, I have now set the size, color, shape, um, and so forth of all of my dots. Now at this point, I'm still showing everything here, but I can take my mouse and drag into an area of interest. So now I've selected just 112 of those existing molecules. I can hover over each of the compounds and see the structure. If I hold down the shift key, so up here in the top left, it gives me that information. But as I hover over a particular data point, if I hold down the shift and click here, uh, that will uh, now be a pop-up box that persists on my plot. Uh, so if I wanted to then see that, you can uh, add as many as these as you wish here. Now, once you have this pop-up, you can change the settings and what that looks like here. Uh, so instead of the full word molecular weight, maybe you just want MW. Maybe you don't want the log P to show, but you do want um, the wild type inhibition uh, to show as WT inhibition. So you can turn on the data that's available here. You can turn on which fields are shown in your kind of pop-up cards for your compound. You can choose to turn on or off the actual chemical structure and show the molecule ID or not if you want to. So you can affect the data that is displayed in these pop-up structure cards uh, or entity cards. And then in the statistics tab, you can also choose to set a linear regression uh, and or whisker bars uh, for your standard deviation or standard errors in case you imported replicate values here. Uh, so you can turn all of that on. So now I've gotten um, my scatter plot set up as I want here. Um, you can set the ranges of these uh, X and Ys and what have you. There is an actions menu up here, so you can add uh, another scatter plot and maybe a histogram. Uh, so you can have up to four plots uh, in your visualization session. You can go into the rearrange mode by using this button here. Maybe you want your histogram wide across the top and your scatter plot side by side uh, perfectly OK. So maybe I wanted to you know, move that around a bit. I could then define this uh, scatter plot and this histogram to be uh, whatever I wanted. I can change the colors and, and what have you there. Uh, as I drag through one, you can see all of the other scatter plots and histograms are changing. Uh, so they're all dynamic and interrelated here as well. Um, one of the things here in the actions menu, you can also export your plots out to PNG or PDF. And you can also save the data table that we shown earlier that I 
showed in the beginning out as an Excel file. So here, um, even though I've added multiple plots, it's kind of forced my data table down uh, to the bottom of my uh, screen. Uh, you can always uh, click that and expand the data table and see the full data table. And I see now is this ability to uh, color code your data table uh, here. So if I click that, uh, I can select my parameters here and you get the stop kind of stoplight colors by default. You can add as many as you want um, and so forth and so on. Let's see if I can get, there we go. There's a little bit of granularity there. <laughs> For molecular weights, uh, you can just keep going down through the sessions and, and count them, uh, do those as well. Uh, as, many columns as you want for color coding. So the color coding of this data table is available. And again, you can export that out to Excel if you want. So the data table, even if it's collapsed, it's always available to you there. For the histogram filters, uh, you can add additional filters. So we've just chosen, you know, when we first came into this, the first few, uh, but you can add filters. So if you perhaps wanted that um, mutant one inhibition data, you can add that as a filter. You can scroll the entire selection now uh, left and right and change your selection, or if you wanted to increase the selection, you could grab one of the sides and, and do that interactively as well. And you noticed all of your plots are changing as you make your selections in this histogram filter. And a final feature here is available in the actions. If you launch a new session, uh, you actually get the ability now to import a data file. If you remember, we imported or we were working with the data initially that came out of our CDD vault. But if you had a data file, maybe you have a library that you're considering, but you haven't registered it into your vault yet, uh, you can launch this session in vision, visualization here and import that file uh, directly into the visualization tool. So uh, you can work with data in our visualization tool that you have not yet imported into your CDD vault if you want to. Uh, so that's a great feature that's available here. And finally, after you've done your selection, so at this point I have 92 compounds that I have found somehow interesting based on some visual trends here in my visualization session, uh, I can uh, create a collection of those 92 compounds back in my CDD vault. Uh, so that's kind of my community pathway uh, back to my vault here. So that's a pretty quick tour of the visualization tool. And uh, of course, always let us know if you have any questions or want to give it a try.